Hello, my sweet boy and my sweet Jenny Jens. Hello. He says, hello, mama. I love you. The Jennifer Eric team, the generic. Love it. Yes, uh, I know. It's yeah. a good one. We are going to have at least part two of unsolved missing adults. Not We'll do children at another time. So let's, without any further ado, let's begin. Let me read this. The real Bobby Dunbar. Okay, he went missing on a fishing trip to uh, Swayze Lake in Louisiana, 1912. His family searched for eight months before finding him in Mississippi. Wait, it's okay. But the story began to twist quickly as Bobby's family weren't sure if the little boy was actually Bobby. And the man Bobby was found uh, with claimed the boy as a relative, according to History 101. Yet another family stepped in to claim the boy as their missing child. How old was this kid? DNA testing nearly 100 years later proved that it wasn't Bobby. The real Bobby was never found. Ooh, what's going on there? Uh, well, he, what Eric is saying is the, the real boy died very shortly that, then. Um, of what? Murder or drama? yeah, no. If it's yes, it feels like um, um, yeah, like thrown overboard, fell overboard. I can't. Eric says I can't quite say murder. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, maybe not being watched close enough falls over. Nobody notices, and he dies. And so, what was he on a boat? Or on shore, just, you know, uh, or a rant. Uh, no, he feels like he's out a little ways, out in the water a ways. So, uh, yes, a boat. Well, it seems um, like. So they didn't never admit it that, well, we came back without a kid. Not good. No, 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 no. They never, no, they never did admit it. Well, no, that was, them, that them? was just fear. Oh, yeah. Oh. You know, because they would have realized that, you know, he had gotten in there's also this like feeling of hitting his head or something um but not by somebody or is it correct correct it doesn't feel like that it doesn't feel like murder okay um, so he hit his head probably on the way off the boat or wherever uh -huh. and probably lost consciousness and drowned yes was it family or relatives or friends family friends yes there's people people that he knows yes yeah. and then it's just it, it ends up being this fear so it's like you know pretend that we're looking for him pretend he's gone missing oh, oh that's that seems right all right so amelia Earhart, we had actually did a whole thing on her but the audio was so bad uh here's what we know uh Earhart and her navigator fred noonan were attempting to fly around the world when their plane disappeared over the pacific ocean july 2nd uh in 37. Hang on. The most widely accepted uh, theory is that their flight ran out of fuel and crashed into the ocean, but there are plenty of conspiracy theories, blah, blah, blah. One theory recently gaining traction due to a photo uncovered in the National Archives. The picture appears to show a woman and a man that look like Earhart and Noonan on a dock off the coast of the island of Saipan. Some people believe this photo is proof that the two were captured by the Japanese military something the Japanese military similar, summarily denies. Yeah, Eric says what, what Eric was showing me is that the plane goes down in the ocean. Um, they both are, you know, dead on impact and, and stuff just breaks up. So that's why nothing was ever found. Wow. Uh, I know, hear just, that, it seemed like Amelia said that they, they weren't captured by the military, the Japanese military, that they their bodies just washed ashore on this little island. If, if that's the case, I like they were not found or they were not identified no, as, yeah. as, yes, as theirs. But yes, no, they were not captured. They were not captured by military. Yes. They died in a plane crash. Okay. Anne-Marie Fahey, F-A-H-E-Y. Technically, the case of Fahey's disappearance has been solved, but her body was never found. What? All right, Fahey was 30 years old at the time of her disappearance. Three years later, in 1999, her boyfriend, married lawyer Thomas Capano, was found guilty of her murder. According to the Delaware Online, I don't care about giving these names, but Capano, Capano shot Fahey while she tried to break up with him, then dumped her body in the Atlantic Ocean, having put it in a cooler. What's the point of that? It's going to float and be found. Both Capano's brothers admitted they helped him get rid of the evidence 
one of them even helping him to get rid of the body itself, according to Delaware Online. They both ultimately testified against him. Another one of Capano's girlfriends admitted to buying him a gun. Capano was convicted and sentenced to death, uh, which was later overturned and converted to life in prison. He died in 2011. So it's just a matter of where's the body? It's So Eric says so many bodies go into water that or are never just found. never found. So he, she, um, she was shark bait, pretty much. Yes. Okay. Yes. Maura, Mo- Maura, M-A-U-R-A, Maura, how do you say that? M-A-U-R-A, Maura, 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 Maura? Yeah, maybe it's Maura, yeah, that's it, Maura uh, Murray was just 21 years old when she disappeared in 2004, she was a nursing student at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst, uh, and emailed her professors that she would be missing the next week of classes due to a death in the family, little did she know it would be her own, there had been no such death in the Murray family. The last time she was seen was on the side of the road after her car had allegedly skidded off. A bus driver told police that he had offered to call for help, but she said, but he said she replied that she already called for roadside assistance. The bus driver got home, still feeling that something was off, and called the police anyway. By the time their authorities arrived, Murray was gone. Uh, an oxygen series about her disappearance brought the case back into the limelight and theories abound as to how and why she disappeared from intentionally disappearing to getting lost in the woods to encountering uh, dangerous animals etc what happened to Mora? eric is saying abducted she was abducted she was abducted she was taken yeah um he said, what he's saying is that she did have plans to, to, to skip class, to be gone uh, for, the, for the week. Why? Um, well, it feels like she was going to, to meet up with somebody. It feels as though there was like some sort of a connection about meeting up with somebody, but maybe oh. somebody she doesn't know. And then it doesn't turn out to be quite what she thinks it was. She never planned, like the breaking down of the car was not part of her plan. No, it did it off for some reason. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so, well, so she didn't just, she wasn't running away because she would have taken her car. That was, that's kind of yeah. where the plan went off. Yeah. She was yeah. meeting up with somebody he says that she didn't really know um, or, you know, didn't, like her friends wouldn't have known. So it's like somebody, somebody that she's either messaging or um, knows like online, that. So, online yeah dating. something something of that nature and then what he says is that um okay uh it, it's like this was all set in motion it was part of her soul's chart okay okay so missing the classes i don't feel like what eric is telling me is that that wasn't actually typical behavior of hers yeah and so you know it's just easier to say you know oh well somebody in the family died it's an emergency i won't be in class Um, So she was just lying there um, about this, but it puts her on the path to get where she was taken from. Um, And he keeps saying like a trucker or somebody in a truck takes her. Was that the person that she she was supposed to meet? No, no, it wasn't. That's horrible. Well, who was the guy or girl she was trying to meet? I mean, not a name, but you know, love interest was yeah, it? A, a, a yeah, yes, it feels like a, to... no, it feels like a romantic. Like she thinks it's a romantic connection, um, and it's was not it? a good. It, it, yeah, I mean, I guess it was, but it's it was never meant. She was never meant to meet up with them anyways, because she was oh, okay. always going to be yeah. um, taken. And I do feel as though she was held for a bit. She was what? Not murdered right away, not killed right away. Oh, how long did, why did the trucker rape and torture her for a while? Or? Like that sort of thing. I'm so sorry. Um, oh, sorry. I know you hate. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. It's okay. I just, you know, I just feel, I feel bad. Um, yes. How, how long, I mean, what mode of death? Strang- strangulation or, or um, and where's her body? Eric says it won't be found. Oh, okay. Eaten by uh, animals. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. out in the woods, left was out she, in the woods. Was she stabbed or? Uh, it does feel like bleeding to death, so I don't okay. know. Yes, probably that. Yeah. Okay, Natalie Holloway, we all know this one. 
that case has been picked apart for years, ever since her 2005 disappearance. She was last seen outside an uh, Aruba nightclub the night before and, uh, she and her classmates were supposed to fly back to the US. Her parents were notified that she was missing when she failed to show up to her flight home and with to her flight home, okay, and with a few days, Holloway's family was on the island. One of the prime suspects was, you know, Joran von Sloot, von der Sloot, one of the last people to see him alive. He was arrested multiple times in conjunction with the case, but was released each time due to lack of evidence. Yep. Uh, he's serving, he's serving prison sentence for the murder of somebody else, but it seems like Eric or, or Natalie said that he didn't really kill her. I don't know if that could be true or not, that, but I don't know. Let's, I can't remember. This is awful. Um, he's involved somehow. Okay. Somehow uh, yeah, he's involved. That's true, but somebody else. Well, yeah, there's a, there's a few people. There's a few people uh -huh. involved, and yes, perhaps he's not the one that actually kills her. Um, okay. But, but there is no evidence. There, but where is she? Um, an underwater cave or something yeah, like dispo that? Yeah, disposed of like this in the water. Man, the water. Eric says there are so many people that go into the water that, that they're just never seen from yeah, again. Yeah, they're just, they're, they're eaten. I guess. Yes. And, so know, um, he, what he's saying about this is that the, unless somebody confesses to this, this will yeah. remain unsolved. Yeah, that's, that's going to happen. All right, Tara Calico. Calico, who was 19 at the time, told her mother to call the police if she wasn't back from her bike ride by noon on the day she went missing in September 1988. First of all, I want to know why. Did she have some sort of weird intuition or? Yeah. Anyway, we'll get, we'll get. Yeah, into I actually, oh, go it's, ahead. Eric says she kind of makes it as a flippant comment. Oh. Just like, oh, if I'm not back by noon, call the police. Um, yeah. So yes, like an intuitive or a flippant kind of comment. Uh -huh. um it, whatever happens to her he's telling me she didn't she did not really know when she leaves that this is going right. to happen okay calico never returned from her ride and was never seen again during a ride onlookers um shared that they saw a truck uh following calico and harassing her why didn't they stop do something about it um th though they they thought it was her friends playing a joke on her mm -hmm. all that was ultimately found was calico's broken Walkman on the side of the road. Oh, I remember this case. Almost a year after her disappearance, a suspicious Polaroid was found in a Florida parking lot over a thousand miles away from where she was last seen. The photo shows a young woman and a boy bound with their mouths taped shut. Uh, Calico's mother believed it was her daughter. The FBI, on the other hand, was unable to verify whether it was, was her or not. So what happened to poor Tara? Eric says that was not her. Okay, okay. In in Florida, that was. Um, he said there was enough similarities in the features. Yeah. And but, wishful thinking on the mother's yes, part. She's yes. Yes. you know. Yes, wishful thinking. Yeah. Um, on the mother's part, mm -hmm. and he's he. There are a couple people in the truck. Eric says there's a couple people in the truck. A couple of men in the truck. Mm -hmm. Um, and she's she's murdered. Uh, and buried. Oh. All right. So, how was she murdered, and where's her body? Still in the same general vicinity. I'm not great with geography, but it's in the oh, same yeah, general vicinity of where she was, somewhere in the woods, buried, um, but okay. deep. Um, and actually, he says it's on private property. It's on Ooh. private property, so is not it, something somebody's going to stumble across. Is the, the murder one of the, the property of one of the murderers? Yes. Yes. How much she killed? Um, I mean, I'm sure she was raped. Yes, there's that, but he says um, strangled. Oh, okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay, all right, fine. Do they know who these two guys are? Have they ever been identified? Like the license plate? Does it, nobody took that down? And No, nobody took the license plate. Oh. Um, what he says about that when they were when she was being harassed or something, you know, people don't always 
when, when something's weird is happening in front of you in the moment, you don't always realize like, because it's so out of the ordinary. He said, that's kind of what happened here is people were like, not thinking clearly. And then later people, after this happens, they realize it's what they had seen. Um, but well, again, I mean, this, this is one that was her, this was her. Yeah. Exit point. Yes. Well, I mean, I can see the people looking at that whole interaction between the tr truck drivers and, and her. Uh, I mean, if she like a typical 19 year old, okay. If the guys were kind of flirting and cat calling, mm -hmm. she was like, ah, you know, like that. And that's maybe why they thought I I'm getting that, that they, they yeah. thought they were friends because of that because of her yes. reaction. Yes, yes. And then of course, then in hindsight, it's like, oh, wait a second, something else was going on there. Um, okay. Yeah. You know, there feels like two of them. Eric's telling me there's two of them. Okay. Uh, Vermont's Bennington Triangle. Between 1920 and 1950, at least 10 people mysteriously vanished in a patch of wood surrounding, this sounds familiar, Glastonbury Mountain that has been dubbed the Bennington Triangle. The name was coined in 1992 by author Joseph Citro. According to a website dedicated to the triangle disappearances, including tour guide Middle Rivers, must be a Native American, in 1945, college student Paula, uh, Paula Weldon in 1946 and eight-year-old Paul Jepson in 1950. So what happened to these people? Maybe they're one of the, the 400 that mass disappearance or something. I don't know. Yeah, um, that actually does feel a little bit, a bit, a bit more um, like Bermuda Triangle type of weird energy. <laughs> like, like alien abductions or something? Yes, like just disappearances there because bodies are never found. Yeah. Uh, I mean, nothing. That's a lot. Um, Ten bodies. I mean, it seemed like they would find one if it was like the a, a murderer in in the woods. Yes. Yes. No. This does not feel. This does not feel like that at all. So weird. Um, did they get transported to another dimension, another universe? I mean, and and why yeah, so, were they? So Eric is that I find this actually very interesting is that sometimes missing people, this is part of their contract that they're not necessarily murdered, they're yeah. just taken. Okay. Um, and so huh. it, it creates, uh, you know, it, it creates a different level of loss here yeah. when, when somebody that you love is just missing. Yeah, it, it's um, true. So, so he he says that sometimes, and so there's these areas like like this area apparently, yeah, where it's like um, creates like an unsolved mysteries type of thing, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and then the bodies are never found. If the bodies, he said, it's just such a random peep amount of like different types yeah. of people. It's not yeah. like serial killer. It's not anything like that. Um, yeah. So if it's in your chart like this, you end up in a place like this where you're just like taken back, well, he says. Like you're just taken back. Do you know what kind of race of aliens took them? It, he says it's not even always alien. That sometimes oh, we oh, just really? go back to the other side and the body disappears. Wow. Um, uh, it, for the ones that were aliens, if there were, Yes. Why did they take them? To, were they going to research them or breed them with their stock? And, or, I mean, I don't know. There's all sorts of possibilities. Yeah. Yeah. There's the, all kinds of possibilities. Um, but this particular area, it, it just feels more like, okay, boom, you're done. Like, yeah. You, at your point in your life, you're done. You end up in this spot and then you're taken back. Oh, wow. Well, that's not so bad if you didn't experience any horror or pain. Um, yeah, no, this does not feel like that at all. This does not feel like yeah. that at all. That's weird. The ones so, that were taken by... Oh, go ahead. Well, so what he's saying is so many, many hundreds of other people have been in this area and have had nothing happen to them. Yeah. So it has to have, be a contract for... Yes. Individual? 
Yes. Okay. Strange. So um, the ones taken by aliens, did they live very long, a normal lifespan, or were they? Yeah, just, yeah, like, it's, yeah, so I guess in that, in that case, um, I'm asking Eric, I said, perhaps are they, were they alien that kind of just came in here? Oh, and they went back home. And he says, yes. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Amy Roe, R-O-E, Bechtel. Bechtel went missing during a run on July 24th, 1997, which police know as her car was found near a running trail she frequented. Her car and an eyewitness who claimed they saw a woman who could have been Bechtel jogging was all the evidence there was. Six years later, a watch similar to the one Bechtel owned was found in the area, but it was impossible to get con to connect it to her. According to Fremont County Sheriff Sergeant Roger Reiser, the lead investigator, there's just one person of interest, Bechtel's husband, Steve, who has since refused to take a polygraph test. Mm -hmm. um, wait. In my mind, Sergeant Reiser told the Billings Gazette, there's only one person that I want to talk to, only one person who has refused to talk um, uh, to law enforcement, and that's her husband. Steve Bechtel maintains his innocence and was able to provide an alibi for the time of his wife's disappearance. While her care case remains open, her husband declared her dead in absentia in 2004. Yep, he was involved and whoever the eric says whoever the alibi. His alibi yeah so either the alibi is lying or somebody else was involved okay. um because he is responsible for this so was the alibi like a, a mistress or a, a, a friend or something like it that it feels more like a friend okay. a friend um I do feel as though somebody else was involved. So either the alibi is involved by lying for him or somebody else or, actually or was, takes her. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. I gotcha. Mary Badaraco. Badaraco. Uh, Badaraco's car was in her driveway with the side mirror smashed and her wedding ring and car keys were on the kitchen counter. But she was nowhere to be found. According to her husband, Badaraco took off with $100,000 in exchange for their home, the two were planning to divorce. No evidence of uh, the money was ever has ever been found, and the husband didn't report her missing. He claimed that she had left uh, her life, her job, and her daughters behind to start a new life. Badaraco's da daughters convinced the police to classify the di disappearance as a homicide, and there have been tips throughout the years, including a potential Hell's Angel connection. Okay. So... Okay. Yeah, he definitely had connections. Um, so before you and said you the husband, yeah, okay, he, or there's connections like that to this. Yeah. Um, so before you had said Hell's Angels, Eric was saying something about like mafia type of oh, okay type of thing, like yeah. organized kind of crime. Mm. Um, and he he Eric is saying that the husband or ex husband or soon to be ex husband. Um, orchestrated this, okay. but didn't execute it. Well, so, why did he? Why? He didn't want to give the 100000 hundred thousand. Yeah, life. The anger. Just anger. There's a lot of anger in that person. Okay. Um, so, you know. Okay. Terrible. Like that kind of just spiteful, vengeful hatred. Okay. So how was she actually ultimately killed? Was it, and where, where was shot. she killed? Shot. shot, Eric said shot. Where was she, where, in, in a forest? I mean, what, what kind of place and how far away from her home do you think? Um, maybe, maybe like within 20 to 30 miles. Oh, okay. From where she was taken. Um, and I, Eric keeps putting her like in a freezer for me oh. for a bit. Okay. Um, so freezer and then dumped. Um, Somewhere. Yep. So close to where she was killed? I mean, close enough. Oh, okay. close en you know, close enough. Now we're not talking states away. Yeah. Miles, maybe miles away. Okay. See, I accidentally have a couple, uh, some kids here. See, so then he says, oh, there's other ways to get rid of bodies. Yeah. 
and he's making me feel like they store her for a bit and then they I guess dismembered and threw her in lie or something something like that yeah okay oh I think I'm really getting some channeling going on here but in, I don't know D.B. Cooper uh in yeah. Yeah, you're right back there. <laughs> I, I thought I saw a shadow. Okay, in 1970, and I was like, oh my God, don't ring the doorbell, please. Uh, dog yeah. All right, D.B. Cooper. In 1971, a man casually drinking a bourbon and soda on his flight to Seattle passed a note to the stewardess explaining that he had a bomb in his suitcase. Oh, that's really going to keep you alive. And requesting $200,000 in $20 bills. As soon as the flight landed in Seattle, he received his money let the other passengers off and the man of the, the pilot take him to Mexico City. God. Uh, but before he reached the southern border, Cooper shockingly made the choice to skydive out of a plane at 5,000 feet in terrible conditions, wearing his normal pants and loafers. It was likely that Cooper did not survive the fall, but nonetheless, a man on, um, uh, was on Cooper, which was probably an alias, was never found in 2016, the FBI officially stopped investigating. He probably faked his death. Yeah, no, Eric says he survived. Yeah, he, did he jump or did he Yes, just... no, he jumped and he survived. Must have been in those things where you just fall into a, a, a freshly plowed field a lot. Of, it's like... Yeah, no, Eric says he survived that and, and then eventually he dies years later. Okay. Yep, no, he, he survived. What an idiot. Uh, what was his real first name? I, I don't know. Oh, no, first, let's not do names. Oh, first name, but what Eric says is he, he was a highly trained person. So perhaps he was some sort of military or, Ooh, or deal survivalist or, or something. Oh. Um, because he said he had the skill set to survive this. Jesus. Okay. Um, Laura Spire, S-P-I-E-R-E-R. -E -E Spire's disappearance was unusual in that her, her entire uh, night, right up until a few moments before her disappearance, was trackable via security camera. Hmm. The 20-year-old Indiana University student went out with her friends during a summer night in 2011 and was never heard from again. She was last seen at around... 4.30 a.m., my husband says nothing good ever happens after midnight. Yeah. <laughs> Leaving a friend's apartment, her boyfriend reported her missing after she left her phone at a bar, and a bartender began responding to her texts. Okay. That's weird. Um, let me see. Go on. Um, wait. Where's the rest of it? Okay. I, I don't know. Go ahead, um, Eric. What happened to her? Eric uh, says murdered. Oh, murdered. Murdered, murdered that evening. Uh, um, by some stranger or? Yes. Yeah. Yes. A, a, a man who picks her up, rape, murder. Well, did she, um, did she get uh, snagged at the bar or was it somebody that was in the bar at the same time she was? Yes. Yeah, somebody had been watching her. So either inside the bar or right outside the bar when she um comes out um it's it's very strange because you know it, it, i'm starting to feel like it's very easy to get rid of a body <laughs> the way eric is putting it because it, it's just you know if you don't want a body to be found he said there's just you just it's very easy to hide a body very mm -hmm. easy to hide a body i bet so why did she leave her her cell phone on the bar unintentional okay was this somebody she knew it very casually like maybe seen in passing this does not feel like a boyfriend or an ex-boyfriend or anything like that so you know if she goes out a lot maybe somebody she sees in passing yeah um not a complete stranger but okay. you know first name basis maybe okay uh, very very casual acquaintance so was it because and, and i'll tell you eric says that sh she's not the only one that he's killed oh it's a mur like serial killer yes yes well so were they casually acquainted only because he 
went up to her, hey, can I buy you a drink? That kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, like this sort of thing. Yes, yes. Um, Eric says he's, um, you know, very friendly, yeah. acts like very helpful, this, this sort of thing. Psycho. Real how psycho. Did, how did he convince her to go with him? Or, I mean, how, how did oh, that whole thing happen? He incapacitates her. Oh, how? Um, Stun or a drug or drink or something? Yeah, something like that. It's, it's got to be more like drugs or what's that stuff? That they, uh, the date red oh ether something like that like something where oh. she's out oh, um, wow. has he ever been found for any other murder mm -mm. no mm. all right let's just do one more harold holt harold holt was a prime minister was a prime minister of australia the 17th to be exact i don't know why they mentioned that after serving in quite a few positions of cabinet he became the liberal, the leader of the Liberal Party, and subsequently became the Prime Minister in 1966. After being Prime Minister for less than two years, Holt went for a swim at one of his favorite swimming spots. Unfortunately, he never returned. A major search operation was put into action, but he was never found. In addition, no formal inquiry into his disappearing was ever brought forth. At the time of the incident, Holt was taking pain medications for a shoulder injury. Even though Holt was a skilled swimmer, it is believed that he was either swept out to sea. Yep. Oh, there are sharks around there. Yes, Eric he says he was swept shark. out. He gets caught into a rip current and he gets swept out. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, like pulled out and yes. Um, Eaten yes. by sharks. Yes. Totally. His yes. death was eventually ruled as an accidental drowning. The location where he went swimming was known for strong rip currents. There we go. An exhausted search yielded uh, no results. His body was never found, and the slang was uh, coined after his disappearance, do a, do a hairy halt, which meant to bolt or disappear abruptly. <laughs> yeah, no, he didn't take off. No. <laughs> okay. Wow. That was cool. All right. I'm going to end it here, and we'll do oh. the rest uh, later on. So short but sweet, people. Yeah. Thank you excellent. so much, Jennifer. Thank you, Eric. I love you both. And you guys, check her out at psychicmediumjenniferdoran.com, which I will put right here. Hit the notification bell, please. Subscribe and share. Thank, Thank you. you. Love you. Love you too. Bye. Bye-bye.